Welcome to Unreal Gems. In other episodes, we have learned how to translate the user interface. In this episode, we will learn how to translate source code, be it C++ or Blueprint. Roll intro. So let's now see a small review of what text gets gathered by the engine. So first of all, remember from the last video, we had the interface text, which is a variable of type text. So we can see it here, for example, in the main menu. And next we have its details with the advanced localization properties. So that will be found by the engine localization system. Next, we have blueprint variables, which can be uh, only text, no strings, if we want to localize the text. So we will use the type of variable text. It can be a literal or a declared variable, but you get my point. So this is the summary for blueprint localization. Next, the engine will look for source code that has ns log text or log text functions. This can be found in C++ files or any files. Okay, so we are back in the engine. We have um, created two new blueprints. One of them is the purple orb. The other one is the green orb. One of them is Blueprint code and the other one is C++ code. Both of them have a text that needs to be localized and that will be localized with the Unreal Engine localization system. If we take a look at BP Energy Orb, you can see that it has a user message, which is declared, a variable declared in the Blueprint. It's a translatable text. You can see that it says you found a green orb. And then we have the purple orb, which has some C++ variable that contains text. You can see it because it is declared um, as a C++ U property variable. If we take a look at the localization options, you can see the, a custom namespace and key, which does not happen with other text unless we change it. You can see that this is not a blueprint variable because if I check and check the show blueprint uh, variables, uh, inherited variables, it disappears. So you can see that it is a C++ variable. We are also going to see its code and we are going to see that we can change it in, in the source code. And here it will just uh, use that namespace and key and it will just set it and forget it. Okay, so we can see that we have a function to update the number of orbs and also show a user message uh, using the HUD. You can see that the message can be custom and right here we are customizing it in C++ code, in the C++ header. So here we are in our source file. We have declared in this C++ file uh, the actor message variable, which is an F text variable, which we can localize. We call the NS log text function, which uh, inputs a namespace. We have the namespace first. We could see this namespace in the advanced localization properties. Next, we have the purple or message key. So this is the key. We could also see this key in the advanced localization properties. Remember that the auto-generated ones were numbers and letters without much sense, but here we can define our own as long as it doesn't repeat all over our project. And last but not least, we have the text that we are going to be able to localize. In this case, you found a purple orb, which we could also see in the blueprint. But as you can see, everything came from the source file. We could also uh, uncomment this defines 
because if we have multiple actors or multiple text fields, in this case, we could have another one and we don't want to be able to, we don't want to need to specify the name space. So we could call instead of NS log text, we could call log text and we could get rid of the user messages namespace because as you can see it is defined as a block up here in the define so we can get rid of it in the call to the log text function and we can specify only the key and the text so this is quite easier less lines to write less characters to write and we got we can save some uh, resources here and everything is more readable okay so let's go back i'm not gonna compile because as you can see it's working fine let's go back to what we had and that's that so now you know how you can localize text in a c source file you can see that again remember the namespace and key match the ones that we had before and we are also going to need to tell the engine how to find these new source code uh, files with the localizable elements in them. We can add a new path in which we are going to look for things and we could also modify the source code extensions if necessary. If we add the new path, you can go ahead and go to source and in Stackobot there we have the headers and the C++ files. Next, we also need to tell the engine where to find the blueprint with the localizable text, which was not in the UI section. So we dive deep into the blueprints in the project and in game elements, which is where the uh, purple orb and all of that in the energy orb appear. We can go ahead and click on save selected and gather text. Once we gather text, we are going to see that the number of untranslated words goes up and the number of words in the native language, in the native culture. We can go ahead and click OK and we can go ahead and look in the translation editor at the new strings that we can translate. If we check the untranslated strings we are going to see that in the end we have the new strings like you found a green orb we are going to translate it to spanish which is has encontrado una un orbe verde exclamación y también tenemos que traducir la, el string de you found a purple orb which in Spanish is has encontrado un orbe lila exclamación you can see that in the namespace we have user messages and that in the key we also had a purple orb message we can go ahead and count the words right now we can click ok and we can see that the count went up and as always we need to compile the text to let the engine know that we have new stuff and um, we can see that if we don't uh, set a custom namespace you can see that it generates a key for us and the namespace is empty and if we go to the other one remember that we had the namespace and key that we declared in the c++ file so you can see that in the context uh, um, menu. This is what we want because we have full control over the keys and namespaces. Now if we go back to the widget blueprints, we can see the HUD widget blueprint with the user message in the middle. It is he hidden when the game starts and we will uh, make it uh, visible from the blueprint you can see it here the set coin text you can see that it sets the amount of coins and also 
makes the user message uh, custom according to the local variable that, that comes from the function and then place an animation which uh, hides the user message. Now if we test the game we are going to see that when we get the purple orb it says has encontrado una un orbe lila and now if we go to the green orb it says has encontrado un orbe verde. So that's it for this episode. I hope that it has been useful to you. If this is the case, please go ahead, like and subscribe. We will see each other in the next episodes where we will dive deeper in the localization system in Unreal Engine.